I've had an idea for a while now to make some sort of a floating bedside table and I've always sort of had in mind kind of what I wanted design wise so I went to SketchUp made a model of it and from there I was able to start building the project. I'm using alder for this project mostly because I have an abundance of it and it bears a really close resemblance to cherry so that's what I decided to use for the most of this and to get things started I'm cutting this board into two shorter lengths so that I could join one edge of each of them and glue them up into one wide panel. This would give me the proper amount of width needed so that I could make the box. You can see here that I alternated the clamps top and bottom to try and prevent any warpage during the glue up. Before I could go any further, I needed to stabilize a couple of small knots with some fast setting epoxy. I used a card scraper here to help clean up the excess epoxy before moving on. I sent the board through the planer next for a couple of cleanup passes and final thicknessing. Although this wasn't part of my original design plan, I decided to use the live edge on the front of the cabinet. So I measured from that point to get my depth and then squared it up with the track saw before cross cutting all the parts to their final length. I had to make a small adjustment to the width of the bottom and the sides to be able to get the proper amount of reveal that I was wanting. I have the box just sort of dry assembled at this point and laying out the joinery with the use of my combo square. Now it's time for the joinery. I'm using floating tenons again on this project and to get the proper reveal, I'm again having to make a minor adjustment here to the fence of the domino so that it will inset the mortises slightly on the top and the bottom. I've already pre-glued the tenons into the sides of the box to make things a little easier during the glue up. And now I'll spread a little more glue and assemble the box. Before I go any further on this project, I'm adding a French cleat to the back of the box, which will also be used to mount it to the wall later. This is where, to me, pocket screws really shine in this type of application. Now I have to measure for the drawer, being sure to take into account the cleat on the back as well as the thickness that my drawer false front will be and the reveal that I want. I've already milled the drawer parts the same as I milled the parts for the box earlier and now I will cut them to size and cut a groove in the bottom which will accept the quarter inch MDF drawer bottom. For the joinery on the drawer I decided to try something a little different here. First I glued the box together allowing the glue to set up then came back 
and countersunk holes evenly spaced and plug them with the same material that I'm using for the drawer front. This will add sort of a cool look once the drawer is pulled out and it really simplified the, the actual assembly of the drawer itself. I cut the plugs at the drill press, broke them out with my screwdriver, and then glued them in place. Once the glue was dry, I could cut them flush with my flush cut saw and then later on I can sand them smooth whenever the sanding process starts. For the false front for the drawer, I'm going to use this piece of pallet wood that I've been sort of had floating around the shop for a while now. And I had to start by cleaning up one face and one edge at the joiner. A few passes through the planer will clean up the other side and now I'm going to be able to resaw the piece at the bandsaw to, so I can get the proper amount of width that I need. My original intent was to actually do a book match on this panel but once I saw that the defects where the nails were driven in and the fact that I really liked the way that the sap wood looked on the front of the piece I decided just to edge glue it up so that I could get the proper width and then cut it down to its final size. Because I'm not using an actual drawer slide for this drawer, I've just got it sort of fitting snugly inside the box, I'm adding this little strip across the top on the back. Once the glue sets up, I can trim it down with my block plane until I get a nice snug fit. This is mainly to help prevent the drawer from tipping once it's extended all the way to the front. I sanded everything smooth next, going through all the grits of sandpaper, being careful not to sand away too much of that live edge. I really didn't want to disturb it too much and kind of preserve the final look of the piece, if you will. I went with an edge style pull for this drawer and it was set to project at like an inch and three quarters and I didn't want it sticking out nearly that far. I didn't. I really didn't want it sticking out a long ways past the front edge of the, the drawer itself. So I cut it down at the bandsaw and that seemed to work quite well. I moved the mounting locations to the top by just pre-drilling new holes and for the mortise to go into the top of the false front, I cut that using the dado stack on my table saw. I was able to nibble away at it a little bit at a time with the help of my miter gauge along with a hand screw clamp. I also use a piece of MDF as a sacrificial backer to try to prevent as much blowout as possible. I finished cutting to the line with my chisel.
I really love the way that this Danish oil looked on the last project that I used it on so I decided to wipe a couple of coats onto this project as well and again I was very pleased with the outcome and really like the way it brings the color out in the wood. The final real step in this project is adding the false front with a little bit of glue and then attaching the drawer pull. Well, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it was kind of neat on this project that the materials sort of dictated the final outlook of the, the project itself. Like, I had a general idea of what I wanted, you know, as far as design-wise, but the live edge and the sapwood in this drawer front here just sort of presented itself as the project moved along. And I think it's cool how sometimes the materials can dictate the final outlook instead of what you know, maybe you had in mind in the beginning. Now, as usual, I've got a website article available for this project if you want a few more details on how it was actually put together. If you're really interested, I've got a set of plans available and you don't have to use the same joinery that I used. You can just sort of use whatever you have available to you to build this project with. Um, don't forget, like, share, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate all of the great feedback I get every week from you guys, all the thumbs up and the positive comments. It really sort of helps reaffirm what we're doing here and the trouble that we go through putting these videos out. You guys aren't paying a bit of attention to anything I'm saying, are you? Everybody's looking at that stupid picture trying to figure out what it is. Well, anyways, until next time, happy trails. Thanks for watching.